Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dallas Den. This is Chris Cottrell, and this is part two. This is the uh, the lidar field trip segment of my uh, videos on the law of superposition and uh, floodplains of the East Coast. There's a lot of there's a lot of places I want to visit, uh, so I'm going to go and get right into it. Uh, I wanted to start right here in Bamberg, South Carolina. I've mentioned Bamberg uh, before. I just thought it was a very fitting name, you know. Other than Saginaw Bay being ground zero, you know, this area just got hammered with the secondary ice uh, impactors. And so, uh, you know, if there was a ground zero, it's probably Bamberg, South Carolina. Uh, and by the way, uh, Bamberg is actually named after Major William Seaburn Bamberg. And uh, there's actually still some members of the Bamberg family that live in this town. So uh, if you're from Bamberg, let me know <laughs> in the uh, comments below. Uh, anyways, uh, one of the things, one of the reasons why I wanted to start in Bamberg is because there's so much going on in this area. Um, and it's one of the beauties of what I'm doing here is, you know, I can go anywhere. We could drop this pinpoint anywhere on these maps and and the story is going to be the same. I'm not going to cherry pick. I'm not going to go back to the same bay and and, uh, you know, try to fit my narrative to to pre-existing narratives. You know, this we could do this anywhere. Uh, and so just like in part one, I talked about how uh you know rivers and streams it doesn't matter how much you know what the volume is they're going to behave very this you know very similarly and uh, a young river tends to be very straight and narrow and and have deeper channels right you, you know and we see this up in the mountains a lot but uh down here on the coastal plain uh or the bottom of the piedmont anyways you know we start to see uh patterns forming that should be indicative of very young or very new rivers and and these are some examples right here, right next to Bamberg, uh, where we have a river channel that was cut very deep, had tremendous amounts of water in it, uh, but probably not for very long. It wasn't that that water wasn't in there for very long. This is probably a one time event, which is fitting what we're talking about here with a, uh, you know, a an impact event and, and secondary ice impactors in this whole area, because this whole area would have been completely covered in ice. Then we had torrential rainfall. Uh, and so all of this, you know, just all of this would have melted and, and started running, you know, downhill and into these channels that were probably cut, uh, by this event. And then that was it. You know, they, the, the, the only time that these river channels see any water now is when we have major rain events like hurricanes and things like that. So, um, so that was one reason why I wanted to bring you here and we see this everywhere. I'm going to show you. Uh, but as we go through here, you know, very straight, very narrow, but, but deep, there was a lot of water traveling through this area. Um, and, and again, using the law of superposition, there's no bays and, and some of the bays are actually cut right through, uh, because of this. And, and, um, you know, and here's, a, here's that example of that Chevron where, you know, you know, using the laws of superposition, just like we talked about in part one, there was likely a lake, a sand bottom lake here. I don't see any evidence of this being a river, uh, but likely a sand bottom lake ice chunk hits it and splashes this stuff off to the uh, east. Now keep in mind that it is splashing to the east. Uh, they are all, all of these splash chevrons are going to be on the east side of whatever body of water was there. And it's just like using the Carolina Bays, you know, the, the main rims are being formed on the, um, you know, the southeast corners. And, and so it's the same, it's the same thing. You know, if we had water, that, that sand was being splashed out. If we didn't have water, uh, or at least not a tremendous amount of water, then these things would have been coming down and forming the bays. Uh, but And using, the, again, the law of superposition, we see bays forming in these sand chevrons. So, um, again, this really puts us into that timeline of having having to be, you know, sometime within the past 20,000 years. And, again, I'm saying uh, that likely this was part of a Younger Dryas event 13,000 years ago. Um I don't want to focus too much on the timing right now. Uh, I would much rather focus on the event itself, and then we can work out the, the dates and the times. Uh, but this is what makes the most sense to me. So, um, okay, so let's move away from Bamberg. I want to go, let's go back to um, the Big Bay area. And the only reason why I keep going back to the Big Bay area is because uh, there is lots of current scientific literature on it. You know, this is this was even mentioned again in the, in the um, wiki page for Carolina Bay. So now I don't want to cherry pick. I mentioned that, uh, but a lot of times our, our members in the scientific community will keep going back to these same bays because they have, you know, formed a narrative around what they what they found there. And uh, but there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of bays that we could choose from, and so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to move away from. Before I move away from here, though, let me just. Um, 
I, I want to take a measurement of this floodplain uh, because it is so broad. Um, let's just take a quick measurement if I can. There we go. I mean, that's over five miles. This is over five mile wide floodplain, uh, and it is likely very, very recent. We see the after effects. We see the meandering of, of uh, streams and, and rivers inside of these bays. I mean, inside of these floodplains, but, but that was probably the after effects. Uh, you know, we see this a lot with glacial meltwater where we have braiding of streams and things, and that's, that's what I think we're seeing here as well. Uh, and, and another interesting thing, let me click off of that. You know, we can actually see that there was a, an older floodplain here, um, and the bays are all, all over it. Uh, and then we have the water from the melting ice and rainfall cutting right through those. And you can see where the newest, uh, the most recent floodplain was cut, uh, likely during. And, and this is what the whole thing should look like. We should see these cutouts of, of, um, of water, you know, as we mentioned in, in part one. Uh, this is what we should see everywhere, but that's not what we see. You know, if I just go south of here, you know, this is all very straight, cut right through, uh, and we don't see a lot of these cuts and bends that we should see uh, from a from a river that's meandering. Uh, again, these are probably very, very new, new geologically, I should say. All right, let's leave there and go to, um, I'm going to go to a little town called Manville. Never been to Manville. It sounded interesting. Again, I'm not cherry picking. I just thought it was cool sounding. So let's head over to Manville. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, we've got. Oh, look at this. Is that a is that a pyramid? <laughs> no. Let's. <laughs> it's it's the city dump or the county dump. <laughs> it's it's amazing that uh, our our largest land features in in most of our Georgia counties, at least, and and in the South Carolina, are landfills full of our garbage. Uh, anyways, uh, so here's Manville. Um, now again, I wanted to show Manville again because of, oops, you know, we have a lot of these sand chevrons. We've got very, but the, so, which means that this was a pre-existing river. Uh, then we have, you know, very, very straight and narrow channels being cut. And then all of these bays, I'm going to come back to these bays later on. Uh, my next little part of this video series is going to be on what I call high bays, bays that probably never, ever, ever had water in them. And we're going to pinpoint quite a few of those. And again, this is a good example of that. So I'll come back there later. Uh, but again, I wanted you to see these floodplains, uh, see them all just cutting right through this area that is just pot-marked with, with Carolina bays and none of them within any of these, um, these areas. Uh, let's leave there. I want to go back to lazy, uh, lazy lane, which I talked about in part one. If I can find it, lazy lane, lazy lane. There it is. All right, let's head over to lazy lane. Got just a few more minutes here. Uh, and the main thing I wanted to look up here at lazy lane, um, again, is this massive floodplain, uh, you know, huge, you know. Uh, and again, if we can use that, we don't see any bays in here. It was likely washed over quickly after this event. We do see some, uh, some, some sand splash chevrons in these areas. Uh, so, so we actually have more of this braiding, but this would have been huge, tremendous amount of braiding uh, going on here. Uh, here's that bay that was like completely sheared uh, because of this flooding. And again, you don't see like, uh, you know, this river, these, these rivers cutting in. This was a ton of water coming through here at one time and uh, cut right through there. And uh, look at that, look at how broad this floodplain is. And if I just measure it from, I mean, golly, I can go from here, all, from here, from here, all the way. You can cut through that bay right there, too. Um, that's almost 10 miles right there. Uh, so, so that's, you know, this it was an insane amount of water coming through here. Um, all right, quickly, um, the last one I want to look at is Fayetteville, North Carolina. And uh, one of the reasons why I want to look at Fayetteville is because it actually uh, demonstrates what we should be seeing in a lot of these areas where we have these Carolina bays. Uh, these rivers, this river is cutting through this area. We should see that all up and down these rivers, but we don't. It's very, very straight. Uh, and what's interesting is that this was actually being pushed. All this water is being pushed over and actually redirected this entire channel. So anyways, guys, uh, the, just a quick virtual field trip. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you next time in part or 
the next the next video.